Last week, I got a question from one of my YouTube viewers. It was in a comment saying, how can we use date picker inside Power Apps and make the user select only today and tomorrow date in the date picker? Well, date picker is not actually for validation, but it has some limited validation options inside it. So in this video, we want to go through what our options are, what are the limitations, how can we filter or limit the dates that the user can select inside date picker, and when the date picker fails, what are the other options? It's not just one single control. I want to connect it to a data source, in this case, SharePoint, and see what we can do with it when it is actually connected to a SharePoint list from inside an edit form. This is going to be fun. Let's start with our setup without wasting any time. I created a SharePoint list called Appointment List. It has only two columns. One is Title. The other one is Appointment Date. So the idea is that inside Power Apps, we have already one simple screen that has a data table connected to that list. So if I run it, it just shows you everything there. There is only one record, not much. But at the same time, I created another screen, which is blank at the moment. And on the first screen, if I run this and if I click on this calendar icon, it should bring me to the second screen that user should be able to enter a new appointment and save it so that the appointment is added to this SharePoint list. So let's do it quickly while I am in the second screen. I want to insert an edit form and I need to connect it to the same data source that I have here, appointment list. And I pick this one, just make sure that the default mode is new because it's supposed to create a new record. And I don't need to add the attachment, so I take it out. Probably if you are familiar with my videos, you know I hate these multi-column thingies. So I go with the single column. So now it looks a little bit better. I just need a save button here. Let me just insert a save button here, maybe on the right side, which is good. Make it bigger. And when someone clicks on it, it's going to say submit form. And that's going to be form one. And after that, if the submission is successful, I want to pick this on success. And I say navigate to screen home. Done. So let's quickly try it and make sure it works. I call it appointment two. And the date can be any date that the state time picker picks. For example, for this date, I click OK and I click on save and the new record is added to my SharePoint list. Now the problem starts. Let's say I click on this guy. I'm in the second screen. First of all, it doesn't show much because I was supposed to reset it when I go to the second form. I pick this guy and I say, before you navigate, reset form. And that's going to be form one. So now, if I save it and run it, when I click on this guy, it takes me to the other screen and I have a fresh form to enter the data. Great. We are good. The date picker control that I have here, first of all, it doesn't show you the time because inside the SharePoint list, when I created this column, if I go to the column setting, you will see I did not include time. So naturally, the control that is added here to this form shows only a date picker, not any additional dropdowns to give the user options to enter time. Let's see what this guy can offer. I only want to allow the dates to be for today, tomorrow, or maximum day after. Nothing before today and nothing after day after tomorrow. If you really look at the options, the only options that you have for a date picker are the start year, which by default is set to 1899, and the end year, which is by default calculated 
100 years from today. Well, we are talking about days, not years. So basically, the start year or end year does not help us. We need a bracket of three days starting of today. Is there any way that we can achieve this? So when the user runs this app, only today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow can be selected and nothing else. The reality is that, no, we cannot really disable anything out of these three and say, okay, these ones cannot be selected and only these three can be selected. But there is a tiny little thing that can probably help us. That is called unchange event. How is it going to help? I can come here and I can say, guys, when the unchange event is fired, there we go. So when someone picks a new date here, do it like this. If self, which refers to the current control dot selected date is less than today, then reset self, which is the same control that we are inside it. Let's close this guy. I'm missing the brackets after today. Save. And let's see what happens. Now, I said if the date that the user selects is before today, reset the control, which gives you a behavior like this. If I pick today and I click OK, we are good. If I pick 29th, we are good. If I pick any date in the future, we are good. But if I pick 20th and I click on OK, it's going to reset, so it's not going to accept it. And we're good. We just need to add the second condition here, right? So let's put it this way. And I say the second condition is or the same condition is greater than today plus two. I save it and I run it again. Look at that. Today is good. 29th is good, which is day after tomorrow. But 30th, if I click OK, it resets it. We are done. It works, but it's not very intuitive. Users are going to be confused. Yes, you can set some variables when this condition is met. And based on that, you can display a message here or hide the message, whatever you want, change the color. Fantastic. Those things are great. But still, it's just three dates that the user needs to select. Can't we have a better idea? Let's say if an option like this is not practical, what if we replace this date picker with a drop down like this or even a combo box like this? I go for something like this any day instead of putting even something like this, because, hey, today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, pick one of them, you're done. Now, let's see how we can do that. I come back here before I mess up with this form. Let me make it a little bit smaller. I want to add a drop down here to go one step at a time. Drop down, and I just add this drop down here. And simply, instead of putting the drop down sample, I can put an array and I can add today. And I close the bracket here. I really don't like it this style. I'd rather convert it to text and then comma. And I can put even my desired format and I can say year, month, and day. And I close the bracket for text. And that's going to be something like this. Of course, it has only one option, but if you want to add more, that's going to be even better. So let me just pick the whole thing, copy it, and that's going to be today plus one. And the other one is going to be today plus two. And just like that, when I run this, I have this drop down with three options. And I only need to bring this guy inside this and replace this date picker with this drop down. I don't have much time. I'd rather do something a little bit fancier while we are at it. So I insert a combo box. Combo box comes here. 
And now what I put inside this combo box is the interesting part of this video. Instead of combo box sample, I want to add three days. So I can say an array of three dates. The first one, I want to add the record of date that contains today. I want to add another record to this, which is again date, but the date is going to be plus one, which is going to be tomorrow. And the last record, the date is going to be today plus three, which is going to represent the day after tomorrow. Now, if I save it before doing anything, I just pick this guy and I go to combo box because I want to allow single select only, multi-select disabled. So when I run this one and I click on this drop down, you don't see anything. But if I pick this guy and I go to the fields, you will see nothing can be selected. Reason is that combo box does not like date. It says only give me text, but I don't want to do that. I'd rather get this table and play with it differently. Instead of just adding it as hard coded, I want to add some calculated columns to make my life a whole lot easier. So I would say add columns. And for the add columns, I would say add a new column called date string. And the value of this column is going to be this record dot date, whatever that date returns, convert it to text. And the format is going to be my favorite format, which is year, month, and day. And I just close this bracket and I close this last bracket. Now we have date and the date string. This time when I pick this guy, if I go to the fields, date string is selected and that's the only field that can be selected because it's string. Great. So now my combo box works just like my dropdown, but I want more. Now, remember that combo box can have a double layout, which means I can introduce the second value here and that second value can represent the hint that I want to say, hey, this is the date for today, this is the date for tomorrow, and this is the date for day after tomorrow. If it is that simple, in addition of date, under every single one of them, I can say day, and the value for this one is going to be today. For this one, day is going to be tomorrow. And for the last one, this day, is going to be day after tomorrow. And I can just save this. Now, when I come back here again and pick this guy and I click on edit, this time for the secondary text, I can pick day. Look at that. Click on this drop down and I have today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow. Mission accomplished, but not completely, because we have this guy out of this form. I want to bring it inside this form and make it work. How? It's very simple. I come back here and I pick this card. I expand this. I take this guy. I take a copy of it. Make sure you select this card and then you paste this guy here. It says this card needs to be unlocked. Sure, we unlock it. And now I added a combo box inside this form. Typically, I should set the X to 30, which is 30. And I should set the width to parent width minus 60. So it's going to be perfectly aligned in the center. Now, for the card, when it's trying to update, it shouldn't get it from the data card, which is the state picker. It should get it from 
this guy, which is called combo box three underscore one, whatever it is, I just take a copy of it and I go back to the data card for the update property. I say, give me the combo box three hyphen one dot selected dot. You remember it has three properties, date, data string, and day. I pick date because that's actually a date value. Data string is a string. This field inside SharePoint is date. So it requires a date data type to update. So we're good. Date picker, we really don't need it anymore. It just complains about a few tiny items because we deleted one control, but we added one control here. So I just get the name of this and wherever it complains, I say, hey, for this one, use the new control. For this one, use the new control. We are good. Now, this one should only come up a little bit, perfectly aligned, and we are good. Let me just save it and test it and see if it works. So I want to set an appointment, appointment three, and I want to set it for tomorrow, which is 28. I save it and bingo, 328 is added. Now, if you really want to take it to the next level, you can change it in a way that instead of today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, it shows you the day of the week. For example, for today, it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Even you can filter it, you can add more items, you can use sequence and add, for example, 10, 20 different items. A sky is the limit. The more you know about the table functions, I'm referring to my own course, the better you can play around with different columns and different values that you want to calculate it and add it to the selected item in your combo box. I think the biggest takeaway from this video is be creative. Rather than focusing on one control and how you can customize it, think out of the box and consider what are the other options that you have in hand. And the other thing is instead of looking into the way that controls or the app is going to work, sometimes you may want to change your focus to something else. What is the problem and what are the other options that we can solve this problem rather than how can we make this control look like this or do something that we expect and it doesn't support potentially. Now, in the end, I hope if you're watching this video a year from now, Microsoft by then has done something with the date picker control because filtering for the available dates is something that I've been dreaming for a long time. And I'm pretty sure you are in the same boat. So let's keep on shaming Microsoft and complaining about the things that this control is lacking. Hopefully they will do something about it. If you like this video, you know where the like button is. And in the end, I really appreciate if you push that subscribe button and make my day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.